Hey everyone, and welcome to a pretty little podcast. I'm Allie Violet Vixen, Commissaro. And I'm Jesse. Welcome back, guys. So tonight's a little different because not only are we celebrating Jesse's birthday, like that's not enough, but we also have a fun guest who said he'd stop by to celebrate with us. Tonight's guest is a multifaceted individual known as a visionary artist. He has pushed the boundaries of conventional thinking and redefining what it means to create, inspire, and proving punk's not dead. Please welcome Jerry Other. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Hi, guys. So- First of all, I want to start with a big happy birthday to Jesse. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Happy birthday. Thank you. The big, uh, what, 290, you know, I've been killing it. Um, you know, you know, it's hasn't, uh, has, I haven't been taking yet. And that's, I'm giving myself a bat, pat on the back for that one. Um, no, it was good overall. Um, my friends, um, really came through for me i have some of the best friends in the world um keep your circle close to you and you can always tell who's really like comes out for you on like days like your birthday and i just want to thank ali you know thank jerry for being here and just thank every one of my friends that made my birthday super super fucking special because you guys killed it and i hope everybody's having a safe uh labor you show off your your hands Oh, yeah. I got my hands tattooed. It says Camilla, uh, like the first vampire. That is fucking sick. I'm really happy with those. Uh, They're still crusty as hell. Um, My friends, like, did it up, too. Like, um, I went over my friend Dan's house. Shout out, Dan. Uh, Balloons. I've had, like, a shit year. So he, like, was like, I just want to make you, like, feel special, like, today because it's your day. Balloons everywhere. Uh, everywhere for me, got my favorite desserts, cannolis, Chinese food. Um, I went on a ride, uh, second time on the motorcycle, guys. And, you know, I'm not ball crushing like I used to. Was it better this time? It was because the first time when I got on, I was like, I'm going to die. And on my friend's back, it was like the scream, like just in makeup because I was like terrified. Um, this time I was like, I, I know what I'm doing. I've been on a motorcycle before. Um, so I double glued my eyelashes on and uh, held on, but not like so hard that I'm pushing you forward. So I think I did really, really good. Um, I'm proud of myself. I got off. I was like, <laughs> did you keep your eyelashes? <laughs> what? Did you keep your eyelashes? I kept the lashes on. I, um, had a great time. Uh, it was really hot. So the breeze was like, I was like, Ooh, I'm loving this. Like I could definitely see this becoming like a thing. I'm like on Amazon looking at motorcycle helmets, like ones with little cat ears and stuff. I'm like, Ooh, this is, this could be unlocked new personality trait. Like, you know, Harley girl going to get myself one of those little leather outfits. (laughs) So I was like, Hmm, 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 you know, me, my issue is that if you give me a hobby, I will, or like if I find a new hobby, I'm going to overly invest in it. So that's why we have too much taxidermy and like too much everything. Because like you give me a inch, I will take a mile. I am give the mouse the cookie. But um, I just want to thank everybody for wishing me a happy birthday. Everybody really came out for me. I'm really lucky, you know. Um Hopefully my thousands thousands birthday will be even better down the line. I'm working my way up towards there. Um, shout out to, uh, you know, I just everybody for that. I'm really, really lucky for everybody doing that. And, you know. Well, let me just say, you are like so important to both Jackson and I. Because like, ja- I mean, Jackson, he, he's my biggest supporter. That's my yeah. son. He's like my biggest supporter with the show and he really like pushes me all the time. And with this, I mean, people want to jump on at all different times. And Jesse has just been a trooper. You never know when you have to move things around 
in your schedule. You got to um, just like stay open to being flexible when you're doing a podcast like this, because you really never know. We've had cancel. Dude, we've kept this going. We've had cancellations. We've had, you know, people being like, I don't know if I can do it. Can we do it earlier? Can we do it later at the drop of a dime? And um, I'm just thankful to have you. Um, also, um, I'm thankful to have our producer. I'm thankful to have our graphic designer. Uh, it's, we have a whole team oiled machine and I just want to thank everybody behind this and Allie herself. Um, I, we could not do it without you, Allie, and we could not Aww. do it without Dennis and, you know, Kevin, just like everybody working behind the scenes of this. And I am really, really, really grateful. Like, I think that the best thing that I've gotten for my birthday this year has been the truly the friends that have kept me going. Um, and I'm so happy since joining this podcast to have gotten so many new friends, whether it be the guests or the people working behind the scenes or you yourself, Allie, that have really like, um, it's just been awesome. And I just want to like, uh, I guess I want to thank the podcast itself because it's really, um, I think it's really special. Um, I think what we're doing is special. I think what we're doing is awesome. And I'm just like grateful to be a part of it. And I'm grateful to have met so many awesome people through it. And uh, yeah, so happy birthday to me. That's like what I have to say, you know. I'm uh, happy with it. Well, uh, best gifts I gotten, you know, just yeah. like love from my the fucking people in my life dude like i just like seeing the people really like show up for me um and stuff like that um oh my gosh and we have to get into like all this cool merch I mean, like you when, right? okay oh, when it was i didn't first, even notice you were wearing that yeah yeah when dude. first sent yeah. <laughs> to, uh, when it was first sent to me i thought that was for jesse and i Mm -hmm. I know, I bet. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. So everybody, all my guy friends are like thrilled that you have the hat. Because a lot of bands are only doing the beanies and yeah, everyone's always looking. I have a, I have some of them here. This <laughs> one. Yeah, that was my old design. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring that back. I literally love all of them. That's the one I'm wearing. Yeah. Comfy. Yeah, that one it was like an old Misfits design that I had, and then I wore it so many times. Like I'm gonna wear this one. Like yeah. thing is to like wear the shirt over and over because this red starts turning like pink and weird, and the black <laughs> gets all gross and like it's it's gross. But like then you wear the same shirt and it gets dragged out more, and it's awesome actually. So uh, I love it's that. kind of like. I love a, yeah. I love that the girls' shirts are like super soft. Absolutely. So, like, my yeah, I she was like, Jess, you gotta like immediate upon opening them, you gotta check how soft these shirts are. Yeah, they were wonderful. Yes. Yeah, as so, soon as I touched it, I was like, I need a like a bedtime shirt for I like, know, a man. right? Yeah, I was like, we're gonna have to make a Jerry other bedtime shirt, I think, at this next. I would love that. <laughs> but thank you so much. I appreciate for you so much. Sending all that. Yeah, of it course. It was really yeah. awesome. So let's jump right in because I know we yeah. both have so much that we want to talk to you about. Yeah, let's see where it goes. So what inspired you to pursue music? Oh, geez. Well, the first thing that comes into mind is there's like a few, I don't know if they're like triggers or they're like moments in time, but like when you're in like uh, school and there's like a piano and there's teachers or they play a drum being hit and they're like, what's that? And like, they don't ever have the drum in front of you sometimes, even though like it's like down the hallway, they'll just like play a recording and you're like, oh, what the fuck? freak that is like a snare or something and it's like so when i was like older and i like went through that i was like why on earth would i be going through this so then uh then i started learning what that was you know singing and piano but then like later on in time when i got to see it again because so much stuff happens to you throughout your years uh misfits played with like war at roseland ballroom in new york city 
and uh, I was young, so they asked me if I could go through the meat grinder, like through their whole suit and this crazy thing. But I was like, no way, hell no. I was like so young, <laughs> but <laughs> so but then like they came out and there was like weird. The intro was weird that night. It was like penguins and stuff. So like these penguins come out. And then all of a sudden, like, with weird, creepy music. And then Gore comes out and just these kills him and stuff. And I was like, that's the weird. I was so creeped out of the penguins by the time that other Gore came out. I was, like, ha almost happier. And then I was like, this is the weirdest moment ever. So that's kind of what definitely, when I think to that, I go, that's cool. Because you kind of need, like, I don't know, a culture shock sometimes. I don't know, for certain people. Or sometimes it's fun. So... But maybe that I don't know. Yeah, that's just one of the coolest times where I was like, "That's." They just really stuck with time. you. Yeah, because like the Misfits played with them the whole night, and then them hanging out, and then asking me to do something that was completely absurd or something like, <laughs> like that's important, I think. You know, so that kind of got me into music. So I have to say, there's nothing to hide from, from such yep, a great song like oh my gosh I, I put it on my facebook today just tell me all about it like i just want to know what inspired it <laughs> yeah um well i had the music like i liked it a lot and i had like some background vocals or like as it's progressing and i had like i was like uh we were touring i'm not even sure if i was in the misfits at the time it's possible I was, but I was just playing acoustic in the box truck, like outside the load in or whatever. I would always just kind of spend time after eating or something before whatever. So I came up with the riff and I just started writing the stuff down and then I just took all the verses. The song is basically about uh, singing and just having like the confidence to sing and stuff like that. So, but it's also I got a sw like to kind of just keep the ball rolling. It's sort of government, sort of, but not, uh, you know more about me singing actually like my vocal teacher he would be like uh not oh he'd be like not afraid to be wrong it's letting go so it's like if you're like singing or you're trying to get your breath right or something like uh or if you overshoot a note when i was younger i would put too much energy in some notes and then you go sharp or it just hits like a, a limit or something i've seen some people do it recently and it just if you just like calm down relax and you let go of everything and you just hopefully i don't know maybe even nowadays i kind of just get more i try to focus more into my own self rather than everything else and all that stuff but all that's combo because you have to like look after people sometimes shit happens you have to like save <laughs> somebody so it's really not all me but like i'd like to be there but there's just a whole building of things like collapsing and stuff like that but yeah, so the song is kind of like my vocal teacher also, uh, Don Lawrence, he uh, does like Lady Gaga and did my father. He did uh, Earth Crisis Singer. I saw him and I told him that. He probably was like, why the hell is he talking about the vocal teacher? And like, you should be, I don't know. So uh, yeah, I saw him. Real, and, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's an important part. Yeah. yeah so uh, there's nothing to hide from would be really that. And like when you're growing up, like, you might do something or something happens and you like hold a grudge against yourself almost. And there might be other things that people have to forget or this and that, but it's just like, just go do you and shit will either come toward you towards you, however it's going to happen. Right. Um, and then come hell or high water is like the same shit. I needed a third verse. And that's, that's kind of where it kind of got more government related when it says appears, it must create. When I was watching all those, like, uh, cause I have another song where I use the word proceedings and it's like a lot of those proceedings to go, it appears blah, blah, blah. And it just, it just seems to be like a phrase to just like to almost get fucked. I don't know. Oh, can I curse on here? Yeah, like, yeah, to, you almost, curse. to almost like put oh, yourself really. <laughs> into something. Um, and then I just, I enjoyed English and I enjoyed like the fact that someone would start a sentence with appears and then I had something and then I don't know, it just worked into it. Cause like, here's the song it appears we must create like the pr thing is like there's so much shit going on the thing we have to do is work together and create something better than what the fuck is coming at us or that we were i don't know generate other people see that's weird when you're growing up right you don't always see everything or know and it doesn't mean know if it's true or not or anything it doesn't matter you can change your view on everything like even nails like that was like the whole thing like 
I don't know view on anything, but I, you know, I don't even know where I want to go with that so much. Yeah. It's, I just did it to kind of give appreciation to paint number one. And number two, there's, there's people I've been bumping into that have their nails painted or hair done and stuff like that. And it's like, we should all kind of enjoy that stuff and it doesn't have to be. And, you know, I see people with their boyfriends or it's like, you can, why don't you guys just do something arts? I know it's a simple thing, but it's like a free, freebie, you know? And you know like TikTok, a lot of the guys on TikTok are kind of bringing back the nail painting and like the different. Yeah, I've seen a lot more people doing it. Yeah. I mean, I think so. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. cool that. That's it's interesting. It's like how far some like I I don't even want to go in, but Danzig has one that's like those that uh, hand thing that's really long. There's, then we got like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. There's different yeah. ways of fingernails or this and that. So I'm starting to look at and find out what's comfortable for me because it's like I what's comfortable. I always break yes. at least yeah. one, no matter what, before I even get to where I'm going. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you want to say something, Jesse, before I blabber on. About um just like you know i think that it's definitely important that everybody expresses themselves and just like does the hell whatever the hell they want because you know we're not going to be here forever i mean some of us might i don't know but um <laughs> just you know if you can't be comfortable with yourself how are you going to be comfortable like making your way throughout the world and shit like that so i think it's super yeah. fun yeah it's good stuff makeup same shit yeah so, takes a while like this is even like two like i have to do everything backwards but like i should have done more bones or not as big just it's so cool. time and like you do yeah. things it's it's tough like this stuff like even your nails when you do something like it's nice this is awesome too because it protects my nail like um yeah. where i wanted to go with that originally was when i played guitar bef maybe before i did makeup but somebody like suggested because when you're younger sometimes you might play guitar like rough or mm -hmm. not the best your technique takes time it takes a long time and like your fingers can get chewed up if you're playing wrong and uh the tip that like des kadena or all the guitar players would do is they would put either nail polish or uh hard nails like that clear stuff yeah so that way your fingers can take the abuse but once you get better at guitar and great you don't beat anything on your fingers but going through those phases is what's cool. So that's why I was like, I have this nail polish that I don't even use because I don't need to do anything. I'm, but it's also cool to have in case something happens to your nail on tour and stuff. So, I mean, it's it's pretty, it's awesome stuff. So, um, and then it was funny, like just bumping into things like, oh shit, or my name, like now I know what you guys kind of go through. There, yeah. It's good to understand like, like how you care about different things. perspectives it's, it's, and shit like that yeah, yeah I, I think, think so too. i think that Jesse's better of, with them than i am i mean jesse usually has i usually yeah. have the really long nails it's been a broke bitch month so uh we we are not having long nails we have to put <laughs> we have to put our money towards other things um yeah. you know i've been really fucking good um no i haven't i bought like tickets to like <laughs> Like, I completely revoke that statement. I got black braid tickets. I got um, folksy tickets. I got like a bunch of. I got like tickets to everything, and I was like, "Oh, it looks like a good month." Boop, boop, boop. Like, are you gonna oh, Are you gonna interview anybody at those? Shows? I would love to. Um, you know, I we can do an uh, maybe on the spot, Dennis. Dennis, yeah, we can yeah. have Dennis on from we uh, had Dennis from Ghost Bath. They're playing on the fifteenth. My boy, shout out to Dennis from Ghost Bath. You're a real one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love you, homie. Um, hope you're doing well on tour. I'll see you on what the fifteenth, I think. But, um, you know, and ha oh, and now it's his birthday. I'll see you on whatever fucking day I see you. <laughs> um. But yeah, it has been a broke bitch month, so we are not doing nails uh, currently. Yeah. We are uh, we are getting by. <laughs> we are talking. Yeah, no. it. yeah, my mom told me I have to get these like sand. I, I kind of had a feeling yeah. we have to get them like sanded down, maybe or whatever. They look fucking sick, though. Yeah, I am yeah. like I usually do the thirty-one <laughs> days of October, so yeah, I'll I'll do up the different faces for each mm -hmm. day in October. Every day. She yeah, every yeah, for the last 10 years I've done it. This year I wow. might switch it up a little bit so I can do some other like 
he doesn't too. get to do any Halloween fun because she spends the whole month <laughs> busting ass. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, Ellie, but it's hard to do when you have nails. House. Do a haunted house this year. Enjoy some spooky fun. Take a day off. I really want to go to Salem. That's, that's I, same life. here. That's where I'm going to go at some been, point. Um, a bunch of times it is a fun time it rules i black crop cold opened a new store up there mm -hmm. and it, i just think it would be so much I think fun. pictures of it looks sick uh my recommendations for salem uh there's a castle like 20 minutes out it's called uh hammond castle it rules it is the most spectacular castle i've been to on the east coast it rules go um other we have to grab you if we go we might have just have to like grab you i know i got like i've been i've been a lot of times i know what is just like kind of boring not not that not that not that the educational stuff is cool i uh, need to do a few of the tourist things just because do a few of the tourist things you don't need to do every one of them sometimes mm -hmm. the hidden stuff gems that's with a lot of things though but salem rocks you're gonna have a awesome time both of you, if you what date do you go though like, um, at the end of october I usually go um, in September because October it gets mm. mad expensive, and I awesome. to do September because you get the spooky fun where everything's like all like transitioned into fall, but mm. you don't get the price of going in October because once October hits, it hikes up a lot. So I always went in September every time I went, and I was pretty satisfied with my vacations. Mm. But I love it there. It has like a energy. And I don't know if it's all the witchcraft or if it's everybody just going there and having a um, mass hysteria together has created like an energy. <laughs> but it's really cool. Um, the witches are not hung where you think they are. They are hung outside a haunted Walgreens. They excavated that and realized they thought they were hung in the wrong place. So if you want to go see where the people are hung. Go to the Walgreens. It's behind uh, it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I definitely want to hit up Salem. I'm trying to hit up either one of the wax museums. That would be awesome. Yeah, I keep seeing all these people like taking all these cool pictures with these like wax exhibits. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that looks so much fun. I want to do Sleepy Hollow so I can do the whole Ichabod crane. And like, just like, I feel like that would be like the energy. I'm trying to see the headless horseman. I'm trying to have that, like, you know, experience and be like, this is sick. <laughs> I want to do that. That is definitely on my October list. Definitely want to do Sleepy Hollow. Um, and, uh, you know, I've never been to Eastern State, even though they say it's like one of the best. Like, I have I. I've never been either. No, I and I, I just know. like found out. I believe it's there that they do like a movie night. Yeah, I think they do. Where they have like a huge screen outside, and yeah. I definitely want to go to the Buffalo Bill House. Like, oh, wow, that would be sick. Yeah, we talked to them at one of the horror fests, mm -hmm. and. That seems fun. That seems crazy. That'd be something. Yeah, they like redid the well. Yeah. It's only four feet, but still, like. Yeah. See the well. Um. That. Um. Definitely. You know, horror fest. How? Uh, you go to the, the horror fest all the time. How, how fun are they? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know a lot of people who actually I don't know if he owns it anymore, but he owned a haunted house, so. But yeah. yeah, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna probably do some of those tours like uh like look it up at the end of October, just go to whatever haunted houses or Pennsylvania, there's some cool ones. I don't know. I'm I'm a little out of the loop, but uh I like going. It's I like a good it. time to go. It's a good time. Yeah, but uh, I did a, a half a skull face the one time and went to Fright Fest at Six Flags and had the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it my was friend's so much going fun. To the Orlando, uh, yep. the Orlando one, the yeah, and I was My like, friend just went. I was like looking at that. I was like, 
oh, they put like shmoney shmoney into this shit. I was like, this is like definitely, this is like shit that I am definitely interested in doing one year, man. So I was looking at that Halloween Pride Fest and like Orlando. I was like, trying to do that. Trying to do that. Oh, yeah. So can you share with us a little bit about your creative process when it comes to writing and composing and doing that kind of stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Jesse and I get like so way off topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, that's good. At least, yeah, I, I get it. We got it. Um, it depends. I mean, ultimately, I guess the best formula that's worked throughout, if I had to like average everything out, it would probably go either just singing something or having a guitar in my hand and then singing something. It has to like kind of work together, singing and guitar. Like you can have a riff or whatever, but that riff could take a while to figure out if you didn't sing something. If you sing something, it could be like immediate. And then, but that's where like, there's nothing to hide from comes in. Like when you say something, sometimes it's stuck. And you can't necessarily change it. And you're like, ah, there it is. But <laughs> I'm going to have to go with it. So you can change it sometimes if you get lucky enough and you find something you like. But uh, it just comes out. So acoustic guitar was always perfect. But uh, my my guitars are so nice now. And uh, everything I have, drums, like, I'll write a drum part. It depends. Like, if a song, uh, if I write a song, like, uh, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. You can hear that? All right. yep. Oh, I can't. I can't, but uh, let's say if you did like uh, like Fear the Walking Dead will start here on like F sharp, but it's really not F sharp. And so then, so then I'll write like uh, Dead Man over here. So like a lot of the times if you already have a song, it's somewhat easy to write another one because you, I can then just m start somewhere where I wasn't and try to come up with like something that feels right. Or if there's something on TV or there's somebody something said or something I've had written down. A lot of times now, I, a while, a long time ago, things I used to write down helped me, but that doesn't help me anymore. It actually, it's so fucking confusing and, and ruins everything. Um, I just have awesome ideas that i don't know so many fucking ideas it's insane so i'd, I'd rather at this point it's like i just want to go with something that feels good i just pretty much just want to write all oh, bless you thank you i want to write like all new stuff because it's like i'm older now i feel different i know how to play i took time off from playing different times to feel like better my fingers heal this and that like and i have all these different songs that i've collaborated with people locally because i wanted to make sure that after this fucking covid thing or whatever it was expensive for flights and there was no flights you couldn't even mail merch to fucking people wow. so i started building or not building or i started i met matt a uh, drummer and then i met camille a singer and randy played on there's nothing to hide from and he was only 15 when he did the second and the third solo in that song yeah. um so like i try to yeah i try to include at least you know, with Misfits, you kind of, or Jerry Only, you kind of got to use some pretty big names. But, like, with me, I was able to take some time and try to work with people that, you know, hopefully could go into something else or the same thing. Or they, you know, he wound up going to, uh, Randy, the guitar player, wound up going and, like, learning Japanese recently. So he was gone for a year learning Japanese. So, uh, yeah, so we had all these songs and we had the other guitar player in japan and and you know, it was just it was hard to, it's hard to balance everybody's life um especially when you want to be in a band rather than yourself like i would i would have had tons of stuff done but it's possible the music would have been either cool and great or it would have been cool and great but stale a little bit because i i like having somebody else that loves something do something that i'm with me like Do you drumming, have plans like plans for more music. Yeah, tons of plans. Yeah, like just we're trying to figure out music videos right now because um, 
when I was younger, it was like all you wanted to do was play shows and go have a fun time is really what it equals out to. But uh, when you when you start really doing music, you realize that like you should have had something to give somebody that was great, um, basically is number one. And then anything from there is cool, but you have to have like one great song. And then from there, hopefully do better and, and better and better and better. But like if you don't have that one song documented perfectly to hand to somebody, you're just fucking spending money and people are drinking around you so i mean it's just whatever but uh if you want to do music and you want to be great like you gotta like either spend money in the studio exactly when you have everything together which is yeah. i don't even know what the hell that is but like for me i have to record my own stuff and like work on it or do this i'm a little bit better now where i could just jump into something but like i still like working on stuff so like that's not going to change um i don't know it's very confusing uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm all. Uh, we have some songs, and I was doing songs with different artists. Uh, so, um, Camille K. Um, she's a young artist in South Jersey. I I'm, I have been trying to get out to see her. Oh yeah, cool. I nice heard about you. her through one of my friends, and they just rave about her. Oh yeah, nice, good. It's good to so, hear like so what people were you, talking. I, I, what were you just saying about? Like, no, well, well, I met her through Randy because the there's nothing to hide from. One of our friends has like uh, an autism awards uh, thing that he uh, concerts that he does, and he does online festival shows and stuff. It's pretty nice, and you can donate money and stuff like that. But that's how I met Camille's. I went there to because Randy was grabbing their award for the song we did, and then Camille's like, "Hey, she saw me like this. She met me like this. She's like, hey, and." And then I was like, all right. And then over time, after seeing her, she was young. She was like 14 at the time. Yeah. Now she's now she's 17, almost 18. So it was like, and then after a couple of years of seeing her sing, and she's getting better. And then she sang like national anthem at uh, Pennsylvania, some thing. I was like, that was awesome because my father did that at uh, like a roller derby thing, like women's, and I videoed. I don't know. It's pretty funny. So like, it it was cool to relate in different ways, like because like. Like, my father's 20 years older, like, Dave Lombardo's 20 years older, like, Doyle's, like, 10 years older, like, AC or whatever, uh, GOAT or whatever. Um, uh, then I'm here, and then, you know, like, Camille's 20, not, is it 20? Might be even 20, 20 years younger than me, so it's like, so let's just say it's like, Camille at, like, 17, me, 38, like, my father at you know i don't know 64 or something so like there's all these these gaps so like i know what i had to do to work with these guys and yeah i'm just trying to like give them a little bit of a taste of like what i'm doing when i can to like build them up to hopefully have like a strong team or whatever i mean they support me they're giving me confidence i'm getting better we all win even if we don't do anything after we talk to each other is really the way it works you know so. So, yeah so but we got an aw- we got an awesome song that we did we had a bunch of, she had a bunch of songs i kind of had to go through them i don't want to go too far into that but then we went into uh, uh i was friends with a um uh mexican band rebel cats and uh it's uh Leno- uh i don't know i'm terrible but uh it's bride of frankenstein and it's an awesome song and i, I didn't know that it was going to be awesome when i first heard it in august last year and I, I like asked Robo, I'm like, what is he saying? And he's like, uh, yeah, I need uh, my girlfriend or something. And it's like, oh, no, what is he asking me to do? So then like, but he's like, no, bro, in Spanish, it's cool. Don't worry. I'm like, oh, my God. So like, then I then the, the middle was just something like, uh, it was so bad. I, I'm blocked out of my mind. But it was it was funny because it was like, they run away. It was like about Frankenstein um, not being able to have his. Oh, because Doctor Frankenstein didn't make a girl that actually loved Frankenstein. So he yeah. was. The middle was an English part where I was gonna basically have people running away from me or something. I was like, no, I gotta rewrite this thing. I don't. I can't be saying like. But so then I rewrote it, and uh, we're gonna go go do film. I can't talk. Go film a uh, music video there, and he's got this awesome background like movie thing and it's in mexico we're gonna go and uh his friend's a makeup artist and she like did the bride of frankenstein hair and she did stitches that's and makeup. That's a so hard- yeah 
Yeah, so it's nice to have people into makeup that like he's friends with. That's like a model, and she's awesome. And then they have the back screen, and he has the whole band that are talented as hell. So like, I was like, let's as much as this is gonna slow down everything we're doing, let's work with it because like it's kind of like you know just as an insider thing, it's kind of like a trainer to get us to sing. So this way, if we get our singing to work with a band in Mexico. And then we get it to work with us here in the United States. And then we start maybe thinking about other people, but like we really have to focus on ourselves. But if we get our voices to work where it's going to work around the world, like we're good. It's not like we did a bunch of stuff here. Then we go, oh, let's figure out how to make that. It's like we kind of just attacked everything we could. And then we like calm down and then just do it all like the best we can is basically the the way it is. So it was hard to put, you know, because like I, I had my songs and she was young uh camille when we were working and i was like it got to a point where i realized like i don't want her necessarily to be learning my songs and we should be learning her songs so then i just went nuts trying to figure out her songs and understand everything and try to help her and do things like that and then i realized even more that probably if you're the songwriter and you sing it that if possible you should be the one that's singing and playing that song you know what i mean there's obviously covers and you can have fun and you can do all this but like the original artist sings it the best and they usually play it the best i would love to see your collaboration with that yeah i know yeah we're we're, we're trying to f figure out the music video because it's going to go into each other it'll be like her song and then maybe i don't want to give too much but it'll hopefully lead into my song and then then we'll at least know what can work in the last song and this all has to really happen like immediately because we're in the next like two months to figure out what's going on and the only way to do it is to just put the camera on record and start going right because otherwise oh, you definitely know, <laughs> get it get it done yeah so friday we're, we're supposed to meet and i don't know it's a little sooner i have all this rebel cats music i have to do in mexico on the 21st so it's kind of like uh but i I'm all about it because I have to do it anyway. So like, uh, I'm I'm happy to have all the answers coming at us finally. Like it took a long time, and then coming out of working with my father to do this was just a, like. But like, I see where some roads are going in a way, and I had to avoid of either do something for me or do something that even if it's for me later, it, the paths work together. It's it's pretty wild. Um, being trying to play with all these different musicians and really love what you're doing though so but i also knew i had to move a bunch of gear like i moved my studio blah 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 that's not like what i want to get into too long but i knew there was time that i could work with people learn things have a nice time work together take those opportunities and then i could either be a hermit or we could all have fun and play out together finally and because i used to like tour manage and stuff like i'd like to hopefully do events and keep the ball rolling rather than go back into the studio and just write songs and not be doing things with people so i don't know we'll see where everything goes you know what i mean have you ever heard of love drafts no it's out in Mechanicsburg. It is such a cool place. Like there's just like skeletons everywhere and they just have like a very cool vibe. Um, I know a lot of bands that play out there and they have like great lighting and sound and just, it's mm. one of the upcoming places. Oh, cool. Um, but um, a friend of ours, he actually is one of the promoters out there. So I mean, if you're ever definitely. interested, you can always yeah. along. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll definitely be watching this uh, podcast again, so I'll hear that a few times. And yeah, well, definitely, I'm I'm trying to take as much, you know, opportunities that are good. You know, they don't even have to be, they don't have to be that many people there. Like the Michael Graves thing was fine. I don't I don't need this, but like. You know, but that place, the L that he played, at least the PA at the sound engineers, like they had it all, whether whether or not there were people there or not. So, I mean, it's kind of like magic with nothing. Go I don't know. It's like, yeah, we're all about it. So and they're, they're What's your favorite song to play. Like when you get up there, is, do you have a song that you just love to play? Like no matter how many times mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, I guess it, it just depends who I'm with or like who's playing with me or what you know what uh venue i'm in or 
I'll just jam out like certain riffs that I wrote that, you know, like Vampire Girl or Snake Eyes. Those are like my two favorite guitar riffs, and they're slower. Cause the thing is, like, last thing I want to do is just be like, I don't even know if you hear that. I don't know some shit like just that's not I don't know for me I want to like I don't know what the hell that was but like I would rather first couple notes out of my body usually are where I can hear chords and I can decide if I want to hear each individual note of that chord so like you know ultimately I guess like an intro would be cool to have like a slow like I guess that's why Kong at the Gates exists, or you know, you know, uh, Doctor Fives. It's it gives you a second to like know something's happening, to get into something. So, uh, so that's tough. Like skulls. If I had like if everybody was playing, that'd be the easiest one to just jump into. That like some kind of hate is really nice, but then it's it's got like a do. Where if skulls is like do, it's like more of like. I'd rather feel like this and and then like that off the bat. So it's where is the song? Is it in the beginning? Is it in the end? You know, what, what favorite song? I don't know. That's a damn good question. I just like playing as many songs as possible. Really, this is the way. Feel just being up there and feeling the music and just you know. I yeah, you you know. Have some questions to ask you about yep. your influence from your time with the misfits from your dad. So the band's imagery is often draws from like horror and science fiction. Hell yeah. What draws you personally to these themes? Mm. Uh, and how do you translate them into your music? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, when you say personally, it's also like the imagery from what you said about misfits. So, like, my father, when I was growing up, like, in our basement, or he had, like, weightlifting stuff, or he would do sit-ups, and, like, at one point he was religious, so, like, one of his friends passed away, so he would have, like, his stuff, and he would do sit-ups and prayer or say something. So I was young, and I would just see him do this all the time, and, like, it was cool because it was, like, a window there. It was a nice scene, or they we have, like, these boots you can put on your legs and, like, hang upside down. But, anyway, in the place, oh, like... <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, it was fun as fuck, yeah, uh, but uh, on the outside, like, kind of like this, he had all horror posters and things like that, so you'd be scared or try to do something and get out of there or something, because it was like a laundry room, too, so it was even scarier than... Uh, a lot going you know. on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, growing up, uh, all the horror conventions he would take me to and stuff like that, and... Uh, then I got into like Fangoria, so I would buy those magazines or I'd buy them at the, uh, you know, conventions and then just watch all of that. And it's hard to, when you're a kid not to look at a magazine like over and over f for yeah. a long time. You, and only you bring have... it into school yeah. and you, you think yeah. you're a badass for bringing something, you know, into school and, and it trickles down from there. But hard, yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure there's more uh, reasons why, but I mean, those are the, most obvious and probably relatable to some people posters now misfit fans have such a deep connection with the band's music how do you think the band has managed to maintain such a dedicated fan base over the years mm -hmm. Uh, the song material and the the image, obviously, and then that they cared about it. Um, even if they didn't care, or if they they cared so much about it, they didn't talk about it sometimes. So you never heard them really. You never heard anybody say, "Oh, that song is the worst song I ever fucking played." Uh, I never heard that. I never heard anyone say that they don't really even. I mean, there might have been moments later in time, but it was just because you play something a bazillion times. But I think, you know give it some time you like playing it so um just the music material uh them daring by using other titles as their song names i think is uh pretty amazing because it seems like some people are afraid to do that yeah um, so i think that's the biggest one out of all of them uh i mean i could 
brainstorm more, but those are pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to, to no, definitely. Yeah. So the Misfits have definitely gone through various lineup changes over the years. How do you feel that these changes have influenced the band revol- uh, evolution musically and creatively? Uh, what was the first part of that ending there? Meaning that there's been uh, some different members through the years that have stepped in. How do you think that having the different lineups have evolved the band through the years? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably have to talk that one through, right? Uh, <laughs> Is a lot. Uh, I mean, there was years even where, like, at the last show, I think Glenn played, there was a drummer that they only did that one show with. So, I mean, there's things from that where it's just one show someone did. Um, and then there's things like Dez, where he was in the band for a very long time. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's... it's you know, it's strange because you like when I think of Dez, I think of certain times when he was singing for Black Flag, and to take that past into this, it that past still goes to yeah. this, even if he's not doing it or talking about it. So like that uh, evolution or whatever, it's part of it because it's like you're inspiring people from that who that person is. If you like Dez, you're probably gonna go maybe see that or not. Uh. So, and then, like, Des, uh, when I was younger, he used to play all, like, at the pool parties. Like, uh, my father would go to uh, his brother's house and stuff. So he was awesome because he knows lots of rock and roll and is just willing to go up there and go play for an hour or two, like, rock and roll songs. It doesn't even have to be Misfits or Black Flag. Like, the guy's ready to go. And he, and he loves music, too. So, like, you know, you, you could say oh you know you could think about guitar playing and who's better who's that and it's it gets a, it gets you know maybe when you're younger you can come up with conclusions but like the older i get or the more i watch and you know i you know i have my comparisons between how i play to everybody else too so like it's all cool it's all in the fingers so like you shouldn't really necessarily think that this guy's better than that they're just different people and uh yeah buddy plays differently yeah and uh and um but it's i forgot um yeah the evolution of band members so then like robo uh eric um and now we have now that now original misfits have dave so i mean uh it's pretty vast now and uh, I think it's very important because uh, some people like uh, like when Dez had uh, he was like Flag was kind of becoming something when Black Flag and Flag were trying to figure out what to do. So like there was like a benefit show that we had accepted. So like Dez went and played Flag, but I did this benefit show. So that was like the first one that like I sort of did. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we kind of played together for a while. And then, then I play. Uh, yeah. Well, then, then we had Rizzo for a song or two, and then he played only one show. So he's in, like, there's another musician that only played one show, and that would have been nice to have him on guitar when I was playing guitar, because we were we we were starting to know all of the songs, and we were playing like tremendously, like fast and well. Um, so like me and Rizzo could have been something really really nice, um, but he uh, he was playing with other big big band too, and he had stuff. But then and then I took over. So like each person helps uh, bring the next person along. Like Richie Ramon helped, you know everybody, and you know so like they all help each other, and then they help each other later on when that person's not in the band and they want to come hang out or something. Those people kind of are cool. To, you know it's uh, it's actually. Super important. It would have been great if they all stayed together from the very beginning and the Misfits would have just stayed that one band, but hey, you know, it's just the way it is. Now, other than family members, do you still stay in touch with most of the people through the evolution? <laughs> uh, somewhat. 
sometimes it's just like music or anything else. Having time apart is, is valuable. Um, there are some people start having families. Um, you know, they go through different things. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I talk to as many people as possible, but uh, some people I think especially are... with your fans, like your fans are so dedicated that I don't think they like understand that you guys are also people. <laughs> like, if yeah. day, you still have your regular life. How do you how do you balance the two? Um, it used to be extremely confusing but i was just so like uh working hard constantly that and then having been having been with my father for so long when you get in this like mode of like go oh, oh, blah 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 you know you can say it however you want but sometimes you don't even you know what's going on but there's no stopping because you can't stop i mean there was moments where obviously we were like, broke or a promoter like contracts are almost like you know, the quote is you can wipe your ass with a contract for the most part sometimes. So, like, um, we've been screwed. And uh, what was the question again? I forgot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I know I did it. You know what? We moved past it. <laughs> yeah, we'll move past it. Yeah, we can we'll lose one. So what themes and emotions do you aim to convey through your music? Well, that's the most difficult part, and that's probably why it's taken me a while to start releasing anything or finish it. It's just because, like, the more I start writing lyrics, the more I start, like, revealing, I guess, who I am. And that's perfectly fine and normal and good and all, but it's just, that's what it is. So as it's coming out, I'm like, holy shit. So just trying to map it out and, you know, and not be too persuaded by maybe the time or whatever and just kind of also it's nice to let a song kind of hang out for a while and, and if you still like it later um, then you know it's a fucking good one yeah yeah so but yeah yeah the whole writing lyrics thing it, it, the more you write and you try to be different the more you start putting yourself like closer into a corner that you got to get out of right mm -hmm. so then you have to be even smarter and then you got to research a lot and then you got like if you really care, I mean, if you want to write a song, like, just using the word, like, you know, you can do it really quick. Those are nice, too, you know, so it's smart. It's, it's, I don't know. So do you have any, like, really, like, crazy, just unexpected stories when you've been in a live performance? Hmm. Um. Uh. I'm sure, but uh, I, I love that question because it's like, those are like the questions that you're like, you're not sure how to answer. I mean, there's times well, where- I, My next question is going to be, has anyone really had a crazy reaction to your makeup? Because I know sometimes when I do the crazy makeup, like I'll walk outside and like oh, yeah. people have a lot to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I've had a man in the grocery store look down and be like, are you the devil? And I'm like- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, technically, uh, could be, you know, you never, you know, I can't rule that out. Yeah. So, no, I mean, sometimes uh, it would be live performance and second would be fan. <laughs> uh, for my makeup, I mean, a lot of the times, to be honest, like the girls I'm with get more attention. So you like, I'll even be at a convention. They'll dress up like Star Trek. One of my friends, it's a girl. And they'll like, oh, can I take a picture? I'm like. And then it's like for her, I'm like, what? I, like, then I played that night, and I, who knows, he might have noticed who I was then. But it was like, I was brand new at the time. But uh, my makeup, I mean, yeah, of course. Um, but the internet is a lot easier to um, see something and react to it uh, clearly. Um, in person, it it makes more of an impact when the lights are out. And I'm farther away. Like if, if I'm farther away or I'm moving or I'm sweating, like this can look a little different than just, you oh, know. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. And then like the better we, you know, I get at or I do more things or whatever. It, it has a it has an effect for me too because uh, I like looking at it. And then also like a, 
the more I notice like some of the events I've been doing or if if they're like almost emotional or something like I mean you know you, you don't get you know your face is actually hidden in, in a way so like even if you're blushing like you almost have to tell your body like you don't have to blush because there's no way anyone's going to even see so it's like a, it's a weird thing in your own skin you know what i mean to have that it's like when you do it you know all the spots that are like off (laughs) especially (laughs) when you're doing it consistent i mean like when you have a signature style that you're doing on the regular i mean i know i've done the the crimson ghost uh, numerous times i mean i think every year i do a play on it but okay. I mean, I know, like, I can tell you exactly what off my friends are like, oh, that's so good. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it is, but it could be better. I feel yeah. Like, yeah. You're your, everybody's their own worst critic. So yeah. on average, how long does it usually take you to do I mean, a, Yeah, a I, I wish I would have, I wish I would have started earlier because then I would have like spent, I wanted to do like if. If I have extra time, I start doing like yellows or greens or purple or different colors. I could put them either like I'll switch maybe the blacks to do red and yellow. Um, And it could either look awesome as hell or it could feel circusy. So it's like a chance. It depends on like how well I pull it off. So like, uh, you know, and I this is kind of like the basic one. So... uh, so what went into creating this? Oh, one? how long it takes. Yeah, how long it takes. Yeah, well, um, yeah, so just like the Fiend Skull, there's certain parts of it that allow it to be trademarkable. So what I wanted to do is just find certain things that I could kind of have the basic part of it, and that would be me. And then from there, I could either do it or not do it or change it or not change it. Because I liked, like, staying or I liked certain wrestlers that yeah. uh change it every time and that's how i feel too because like and it's so hard to do something and i don't like doing the exact same thing all the time that's why like it shouldn't be symmetrical like and it's purposely not that because it's, it's better when it's not sometimes i mean there's some things that look fantastic when they're symmetrical but yeah so it was basically to kind of run off of the idea of why the skull is trademarkable, but then kind of do some stuff here and do gold. Cause there was a moment where Cypress Hill, I think they, I'm not sure, or, or maybe not. It's either uh, E-Town concrete. I think one of those bands, uh, they did like a misfit shirt with one gold tooth or something. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to just do all of them. And, or I was going to do certain ones, but it just, doing them all is fine because if i at the time when i was playing hour sets or whatever i would sweat so much or some of that some of that stuff would go away so yeah so it was basically off of that and i liked like the i don't know what that's uh steampunk but i don't like steampunk that much but i do i don't know i don't know what's going on like even like psychobilly i like it but i don't know like Like, i'm I'm stop yeah. yeah, so I was like, I kind of like that, and I wanted to make something where, you know, yeah, it's just the teeth, I like teeth, and then I had these different um, ways of drawing this, and then throughout people posting things or drawing me, they might move one thing here or there, or I do something, or they do, and then I go, maybe I'll do this, or I'll do, and then it just starts moving into something. Then I got to try to remember what everything is, like to draw a perfect jawbone is complicated when you're not doing it every day and it's like you got to stop and go huh this is like easy but it's not easy at all and so uh i like anatomy i like realism um and i don't like editing photos really at all Mm -hmm. so the closer i can get the photo without doing anything to it is going to be good and uh also the idea was when i was playing with my father he had just black uh you know, red and black, like very little thing. And he would always say how long it took him to get dressed and do all this stuff. Meanwhile, I'm doing like... Doing all that? Yeah, and it's like, were you really? Like, (laughs) really? So, so it's really separate me from him. And then it's also like, if, if I'm dedicated and I like what I'm doing and I'm willing to put this 
through my like to myself and hopefully get it to where I'm totally thrilled with it. You know, like that's good. And then, you know, I don't know. I think it's good. Do you have any like specific, like I know with me, I have like certain makeup hacks that I use for doing certain things. Do you have any like just little hacks that you do when you're doing it? Nope. <laughs> there's no, no, there's no, I don't think there's any easy way out of this one. Like, you can do all the little dabs and try to save time and kind of does, but like, you're still painting around tons of stuff. And it's, uh, and when I brought up airbrushing to the makeup artist at JCPenney's or something, she, uh, wasn't that convinced either so i don't know um you know I'm, I'm open to doing all these figuring it all out but like just gotta do it and get it over with when you show up somewhere without your face on do people like question who you are <laughs> not really i don't know i'm i try to introduce myself so usually everybody knows who i am it's, uh, it's sometimes it's easier you know just being than the normal me. Yeah. I yeah, I definitely want to try and give my own twist to your signature style yeah. for one of my looks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if I had had more time today, I definitely would have. <laughs> yeah, I did my mom kind of like me once. Uh, a different <laughs> version of it. Yeah, it looked really nice, actually. It was cool. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Do you have Do you have house? gold? Um, I had it, and I t I still have it though. Yeah, my sister liked it actually, and she doesn't always give me credit. So, bingo, <laughs> nailed it. Nailed so, it. as far as things coming up, like what, what do you have in the works? Yeah. Um. What's today's? Uh. So tomorrow I go to the dentist. <laughs> That's good. All right, he got me. That's good. Um, Friday, I, I I think I'll be meeting Camille, and either I'll be in this or I'll hopefully be trying to figure out her song and then getting into mine, and then I can make mixes and start working on the Rebel Cats because I got to fly to Mexico in like two, through two two and a half weeks or something. So I, I'm gonna. Basically, just be learning all this, just practicing and singing and moving around and packing, making sure that I have, you know, everything ready to go um, for the flight. And uh, I got to get a, I uh, got flights already, so I just got to get a room. I mean, there's really no time for anything. So um, I'm just going to enjoy, you know, luckily Camille's into what she's doing. So, um, and that'll make the flight and the whole time in Mexico easier because then well, at least we've, took a stab at something to figure it out so i don't really want to do anything more than that i was talking to people but like um until someone you know sends an offer that's like an obvious one then i'm, I'm not searching underneath rocks right now to find more work I'm, i just want to not i want to knock this out really really well because then that'll lead into everything else it's like just dominoes right so this these first ones just got to go right and to hit all the other ones and I heard from the little bird that you are in contact with Kimberly Pace. And that there might be a photo shoot in the future. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm interested. And she's in PA and there's a good amount of people in PA. So I don't know if we have to be in PA, but yeah. She is so much yeah. fun to work with. Man, yeah. she's just like, you go in there and <laughs> like. You too, right, dog? You expect to do something, but like she just, I call her almost like a life coach. Cause like you go in there and she makes you feel like totally comfortable and empowered and just like. Cool. No, just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. yeah, I'm excited. She said she has a studio in her house. So, um, and if she's into misfits and was called misfits, Kim, uh, since she was like, I don't know how old. She loves the Misfits. Let me just tell you, I had got, I collect the dolls, like the figures. I have a bunch of them, but 
I always forget, like I get overly excited when I see them at like flea markets and stuff. And so I accidentally got a duplicate. So <laughs> I hit her up and I was like, I accidentally got this duplicate. Would you like it? And she was just, she loves it. Like her whole downstairs is just done up with that kind of vibe and it's fun. Yeah, that's She's sweet. Excited. She yeah, literally took pictures in all your merch. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's nice to see uh, people appreciating music. Like, you know, not the golf side, but like when I went to the Graves thing, it was nice to see people appreciate his music and stuff like that and who didn't lose sight in this or that or it's weird when you go back to music you used to listen to or something but then some of those people never left it it's it's, it's a great time you know so yeah misfits kim totally excited to see all the stuff she has and yeah i need promos bad actually like nice normal shots i think and i have to do some other stuff that she seems like a fun person that is supportive so let me just tell you i took like five huge like tote bags when i went there because i didn't know i didn't even know what to like bring with me and man she was going for the same things that like i wanted to be in like i mean i picked up a harley quinn outfit i'm like how about this and she's like yep I've got the mallet in the other room. Like, let's oh, go. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, the mallet's what's up. Like, uh, even in, uh, forgot what, uh, there's like, uh, my sis, my nieces do plays and they did, uh, Alice in Wonderland. I think there's like a lady or that thing mm -hmm. with the, the hammer. It's really cool. Chicks with hammers. <laughs> <laughs> So as far as horror movies, are do you like horror movies? <laughs> yes, yes I do. Yeah, I grew up. I used to love all of that, but like it got to a point, you know. Uh, pretty much my favorite's Nightmare on Elm Street. I used to like have make people watch that with me when I was younger, or my cousins, and scare each other or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I like some, I like David Lynch, you know, like more newer type of, I guess, smarter mystery. I don't know if that's horror, that's more thriller or something. So, but I don't know. Oh, there's even weirder movies like Irreversible. You ever see that movie? No, I haven't. It's pretty crazy. Um, like the camera work yeah, was like with one. like a digital camera like when it was first done like a really nice one and the editing's crazy and there's this really messed up scene in in the middle of it and i i don't know uh e even when things are disturbing or whatever but the act it's, it's acting and stuff like that but like when they can make you feel or when you're young and you're like you're with someone or like like that stuff's cool i like i, I think i like that more than like horror or something but i, I love horror and all that stuff and they, they i don't know Jussie's our horror queen over there. Yes, I What's am. What's your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie? Ooh. Currently. Definitely. Currently. I'll Ooh. be easy on you. I won't say of all time. I'll just say that's currently. Hard. Um, ooh, you put me on the spot. I can tell you the last one I saw was that A24 movie, Talk to Me. I was like, that's, that's kind of cool. This is sick. I'm into that. Um, he has Thrasher Pizza Nights. I do have I do have Pizza Thrash <laughs> Nights. Uh, that is a long time tradition. Uh, Pizza Thrash Nights. Um, I'm trying to think. Like of all, that's a hard one. Um, speaking of, I like a lot of bad horror movies. I like a lot of dark comedies too. Like I have the Frankenhooker, the signed uh, uh, actress of Frankenhooker up there. That movie fucking rules. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that was the best forty dollars I ever spent. Um, <laughs> some key favorites, uh, just in general, uh, you know, um, just like Return of the Living Dead is a classic. Um, I just like I don't know. There's so many good ones. It's, it's hard. It's hard to say what my favorite one is. I'll probably immediately after getting on Fear, I will absolutely probably remember. But um, they're posting so many that they're playing all over town, like throughout October. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple that I haven't seen that 
you've like talked about so one of the ones that i want to see i want to see the new uh what is that the vamp my friends are calling it vampire boat it's like the last like whatever of um it is like uh it's about it's essentially the chapters if you ever read dracula where it's the captain's log where dracula's on the boat and it's like all the captain's log chapters they made that into a movie so i want to see that that's in theaters um there's definitely some other ones coming out that, that I want to see, too. Um, I'm going to go see the new Saw movie with my friend because he's, like, super into the Saw franchise. And I'm like, do you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. Um, I didn't even know there was a new one coming out. Apparently, there's a new one coming out. I got a text message that was like, you going to go see the new Saw with me? And I was like, all right, whatever. I don't, I'll go. I feel like I'll always go. Go, I mean, man. around, I'll go. I'm- recently i really liked the rise of evil dead i know some people were like yeah but you know uh, my issue is that every horror movie everybody thinks they're a horror movie aficionado and i'm sick of it i'm just trying to have a good time i don't care if that that child wouldn't fly six feet if he shot that gun people are like that kid couldn't shoot that gun i don't care i'm here to have a good time i like b and d horror i like bad horror movies that's like my deal i don't i don't give a shit um so i want to watch a really bad uh horror movie like um some people will be like uh you know that's not realistic i don't give a fuck i don't care i'm here to have a good time i'm here to watch bad slashers those are some of my favorites um and vibe and order a pizza and like you know, or some Chinese food and do my thing. So that's like my take on horror movies. Here to have a fun time and uh, not a serious time all the time with it. But so you were talking about doing some music videos earlier. I have to ask, like, what are you going with the horror theme? Uh, That's I mean, that's I'm kind of in my head right now. I mean, with with Camille's music, I feel like I could probably step like more no- do both. Mm-hmm. Like I had I had some cool ideas, but like sometimes you have these brilliant ideas, and to pull them off takes some playing around. So uh, I don't know. You know. Maybe for her music, I'll be both. Or, but yeah, for me, I'm just gonna do this as much as I can to put the energy and time into doing you know because it'll lead into more stuff that i figure out so if i don't do it it's like you know i don't know can it's a lot of it's a ton any, of extra work. can you tell us about any of the ideas that you roughly like have in your head um i mean they're just kind of basic in a way so it's just like uh yeah i mean <laughs> i it, highly it, doubt that it, it is i mean because you know we're we're new people playing with each other in a way so i mean it's going to take time for us to really have all the uh outfits or whatever ideas but uh, yeah for her for her song i wanted it to be kind of more simple for her and then at the end of it for her to kind of lead into uh cause i guess like uh we're getting closer but the song is called try so like at the end of the song, it'd be nice for her to be kind of moving into doing like a serious, more makeup thing, like me or something, and then that'll lead into my song. And then from my song, then that could be my song would be probably more v- visualized on me, but her song is more visualized on her. So she can have she'll have her song for her to release or whatever. And then I can have mine. And then the Rebel Cats they have theirs and. But like so, her makeup. Once we figure out how hers will mesh with me, then when we get to the Rebel Cats, Frankenstein, and Bride stuff, we'll either take stuff off or add outfits or something or add something. Or, but it's all about I think figuring out what she wants to do for her first normal thing, and then we just start like creeping her out or whatever the, the right terms would be. I am still here for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised she's kind. Of, she's into it too. So I don't know. We're we're gonna see how far I can bring it. Um, I'm trying. So, but uh, you know, so, and you know, sometimes makeup, you can plan a whole bunch of stuff, but until you start doing it, like then then you figure it out. So I'm excited to hopefully get her into that stuff, so we can have that figured out. Cause then, like, I have a drummer, Matt, and it's like, what is he gonna do something? So it it gets a little 
complicated and he's playing with another band right now until the end of october so that's why i'll probably do on october 13th uh camille's playing well maybe you can go to that she's playing uh that uh autism like festival thing and we'll, we'll probably play try that's what i'm gonna when i get back from mexico i'm gonna hopefully hang out with her and just go over that song and maybe cover a misfit song spoiler alert if she learns it so yeah so because it's hard for me to just go out do all that stuff and just go play one song. Even though I should play one song, because it's going to come out really good that one song, and I could leave, but I might as well embarrass myself a little bit while I'm there and be real and have fun. And But if it's a Misfit song, there's no problem. I mean, especially in old. Like, yeah, we'll keep it until it happens. But, yeah, hopefully we, we do, uh, you know, her song. Maybe we'll play mine, but, you know, definitely those more about her. it's her show i'm kind of i'm kinda trying to walk on people's shows right now to get comfortable and see who i like being with and where i like being so because it's not important like i'd i would really like to maybe almost play every weekend or do like pretty much what i would like to do is just do something every friday well we know a lot of really cool upcoming bands that would be all about it so yeah <laughs> Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to finally have the right thing going where I can, once Matt gets back at the end of October, like we'll go over my record and start trying to hopefully play out. Like even if it's some covers, I don't even give a shit. It's just the fact of us trying to figure out what gear we need to put on stage and off. So this way we're not wasting time just thinking about it. So. Yeah, it's all in the works. Thanks for being into it, and I'm excited about your podcast. I like listening to all the stuff and the fighters you guys sometimes have on there. It's good. And I don't know all the different uh, artists. I don't know. I'm, I'm just getting into your podcast. So, how many podcasts are they all up on YouTube? Or yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you're our twenty first. Whoa. Yeah. Our podcast Legal. now legally drink. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> yeah, do you la do you label them like when you look them up? Are yep. you like episode one? Okay. Yep. Then I'll start yep. with one tonight. Then I guess. Hell yeah! Yeah, it's crazy. Like I mean, when we first started, we just used to jump on and like we had no. I mean, we had no idea really what we were doing. I had been on a live show for a little bit, and I was not used to being a host. Jesse had just started doing the whole like thing with podcasting. I was, Allie was like, do you want to be in this podcast? And I was living out of like a book bag, like in between, like couch hopping practically. And I was like, I got the message. I put it down. I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> we'll make it work. I was like, and it was one of the best decisions I ever made. She's like the fo see uh, the pointing. The pointing is the <laughs> thing, but um, she's one of the coolest chicks that I know, and yeah. um, I'm just I'm happy to be. So here. it's so uh, like I just couldn't imagine doing it with anyone else. I uh, I definitely feel that. I think that we're really lucky to have each other, and it rules. And it's just the best. I'm so thankful <laughs> to be here. You know. Sometimes even when you point, like, uh, we can get it right, and then <laughs> once it's aired, we're still wrong. We're so wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's hard I'm to over the pointing now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. I like the contrast or you guys working together. I've seen – my mom watches all these, like, uh, crime podcasts and stuff. So um, not that, you know, this is a crime podcast, but – those hosts are cool, and you guys got like a nice uh, similar thing going. So oh, I've I'm, ha I'm happy for you. The girl that does the makeup, she like watches crime shows and like. Oh yeah, boy, uh, really cool. Like I, yeah, I get real into her. I'll have to get that name. I don't know it. Yeah, I forget. It, it's something. I mean, it's a big show, mm -hmm. but she, yeah, yeah, she does. She does makeup while watching like true crime thing yeah. and like mm. talks about them yeah and she just blew up but yeah no that's a that, that's like a huge thing right now i like i like the uh some of the music to that is cool like i wanted to kind of like 
go over it and write a song similar to like one of those or something, you know? Cause it, they got a cool, weird vibe thing. I don't know. But, uh, wound up writing like major chords anyway or whatever. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's great. I'm happy for you guys. How many, uh, episodes have you done, Jesse? Uh, I think all but one. I think I missed one. One episode, right? That's I it. I think it was two. No. Two? Three? Yeah. You weren't there for Fallon. Yeah, I missed Fallon. I was on in Florida. It March was 3 sick. from 408. Uh huh. And I don't think you were there for Ear Candy. No, I don't think it was either. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had I had some stuff going. Yeah, on. like sometimes, like with especially if the band's over in the UK or yeah. there's like the scheduling. Mm-hmm. Like some, I mean, with because I had- it was not your fault because he literally he's like listen i can go on in an hour so you yeah. can either hop on with me or i mean it was in the middle of the day mm-hmm. there was uh one okay so here's like i here's my my diner job from hell was like our first episode and i was supposed to be let go at like um i was supposed to be let go in time to get on podcasts and then they made me work a double on my first day and that was my first and last day <laughs> Allie was like are you okay and I was like I don't know <laughs> Me- like physically yes mentally no and she was like mm. okay and then she called me the next day like are you feeling better I was like yes I quit I'll and be on my got bigger <laughs> yeah that was uh you know went up like a whole size right after uh, that yeah, I um, you know, I um, you know, fuck that. You. but um, obviously, I made the right choice. To podcast, uh, <laughs> being slave to the slave to the kitchen, you know, so right choice there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had fun with it, and mm-hmm. I mean. It's really been a good thing in my life. And I mean, even my friends like around me, like they get all into it. I mean, even what Lyle did today for your that poster of you, Jesse, where you're like, I love that. I love it too. I was like, can we just use that for everything? It's really good. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice. But yeah, and I mean, did you see the one for Jerry that he did where it's moving? Yeah. It's sick. it's sick. Yeah, he's having like yeah, a nice. lot of fun with it. So Yeah, it's great when you like know how to use those tools and it starts working. Well, I mean, he's one of my best friends, so I mean I could put in a word for you if you ever yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm looking to get back into all my I have just found a lot of support on my podcast, like, uh, especially from people in my life. Like, uh, one of my birthday presents was my friend made me this. It's entirely out of stainless steel with my name on it. And he was like, I just wanted you to have a nice backdrop for the podcast. And I was like. Yeah, it's awesome. I was like. Speaking of backdrops, thank you for bringing that up. I have been looking at it. Okay, so. I mentioned to a friend of mine mm-hmm. that I know is a huge Misfits fan that I was having Jerry on the show. Mm-hmm. So within like, I think it was like five days, he created this wonderful thing. And I it's not even being done justice here. Like I will post <laughs> pictures on my story where he has it with the black lights. I mean, very cool. Um, yeah. it's Victor and it's SML pop art. Okay. And he does all sorts of crazy things. He does customized. He just, every time I go up there, I end up walking out with something, <laughs> <laughs> but nice. Well, yeah. we have kept you for a while now. So yeah. I'm going to say that we, we, c- kind of call it a night 
but <laughs> I definitely want to offer you to come back on. I would love for you to come on. And even if Jesse and I do the makeup, that would be fun. I would love around that. Ho- yeah. like, I'm down. I, you know, yeah. Anytime you want to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're around for that October 13th thing, if you wanted to. I'm going to try going to do that. We are going, we are going to try to be absolutely. Yeah, we'll have to see what events are going on around all those times. Yeah, like I've been really trying to get out to see her. I mean, my friends saw her. She was performing for someone else she was opening. And I, I mean, they've been raving since they saw her. And I mean, they're like avid. Mm-hmm. I go out like all the time to different concerts locally and i mean they've just been going on and on and on so i started following her and i love her stuff online so yeah you could always probably reach out to her if you ever want to interview her or whatever so well i definitely will now (laughs) yeah might as well but yeah at the at the end of october hopefully matt will come back so we'll start adding percussion into things more appropriately and stuff so that's a you know that's what was tough with the Michael Graves thing. It's like we didn't have a drummer, but it's like nice for two guys to groove off each other. So like even with the Camille thing, it'll I'll probably be a coo- I don't know if she'll have a keyboard or acoustic, but it'll just be that, which is cool because sometimes you don't get that. And I hope after this we always have Matt with us playing drums. So we'll see. Yeah, it's good definitely. Stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And yeah, you know it's been. A, I'm not sure how long your other podcasts were. Uh, some of them were kind of long, right? Yeah, some of them yeah. are long. I mean, in I, all I heard fairness, the other one, you were like 45 minutes. You were trying to make it, I think, some of the recent ones I heard you say on. Yeah, our producer was like, Allie, he can talk. Yeah, me. I get yelled at if I go too long. Like, he knew <laughs> that tonight it would go a little longer. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Yeah, thanks but, for bringing me. Yeah, this is a good point, and then we can hit, you know, do it another time. And definitely, like, anything that you put out or whatever, I mean, get over to us, and we will put out on our pages. I mean, we are all about getting the word out, and, I mean, you have so much fans. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot easier for me to start handing stuff to you uh, as time goes here. So, But, yeah, same to you. If you have any guests or anything interesting that I should know about, just hit me up. And uh, tell everyone that you work with I said thank you. Oh, thank you so much thank you so much for coming on and Jesse yeah, I just want to say the happiest of birthdays I know yeah. and I just love you so much I love you so much I'm so lucky yeah. awesome I actually learned that slightly I can't hear it but I'll play it anyway Oh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, a little mess up there. <laughs> All right, it's good for Bim not able to see much over here. But yeah, sorry about that one note. So. I love it. Thank you so <laughs> much. No, it was so great. Thanks for giving me a shout out. Happy birthday on the podcast. Here. <laughs> Thank you oh, so much man. for coming on. Yeah, be hard and we to will definitely be in touch with you because yeah. I'm telling you, like, I want you to come back on in Halloween, like around Halloween, yeah. when I have the face done. I debated back and forth today, but I was like, it's so hot. And it was horrible out. Yeah, like I, it, I, I didn't think it was gonna make it. Yeah, no, your makeup looks great. <laughs> Everything's perfect. Yeah, no, I mean sometimes, like, even if I didn't do the white, it probably would have looked great. Like. There's there's points in it where you can just stop and it looks probably even better than sometimes the outcome. So, yeah, yeah, do a little bit. I'm gonna have some fun playing around with your signature look. Yeah, go for it. If you need anything, <laughs> let me know. Or if you need any advice or something. Most definitely, I yeah. will. Oh, pleasure, ladies. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning Bye. in to a pretty little podcast.